I'm Juan Camilo Campos, uh, and today I'm going to present my project that aims to determine the phases of play using graph neural networks. So first, let me introduce myself. I'm from Colombia. I work at Genius Sports as data scientist, and I have a Master of Science in Engineering. So what is in phases of play? Phases of play describe what teams do with the possession of the ball. In this first, in this first video, uh, we have an example where Barcelona recovers the ball. They start immediately a, a fast attack that finally ends in a goal. We normally call this possession as a counterattack phase. Now, in this second video, we have Barcelona again. But in this case, Barcelona is trying to keep the ball in his own field, uh, making just secure passes. And they never risk the ball. We normally call this part of the possession as a maintenance phase. So if we are able to identify these phases of the play, then we can have a deeper analysis. For example, we, can, we will be able to, to characterize the playing style of a team or of a player. And also, we can search for particular moments of the game that we are interested in. But here, I just show you just two simple examples of phases of play. Uh, it's not always really easy to identify the phases of play. Let me give you an example here. Uh, let's imagine that you want to analyze the goal that the Colombian team scored against Germany in the, 90, in the 1990 World Cup. Here, the Colombian team recovers the ball. They immediately start an attack. They make a pass to the, center, to the middle of the field. Uh, then Valderrama gets the ball, goes back, then goes forward, make a pass and then make this beautiful pass that ends in a goal. At first sight, I will say that this play, this possession, is a counterattack. However, when I was discussing this with some colleagues, uh, one of them told me, like, hey, Juan, this is not a counterattack. Uh, at, the, at, the, at the beginning, it can be considered as a counterattack. However, when, when Valderrama gets the ball, he make a pass, now the defense team has some time to, to recover the shape, to recover the lineup, and in that moment, it's a build-up. So I found a lot of, of these examples uh, when I was trying to tag the data. Uh, it is a counter-attack, it is a build-up, uh, it is uh, a maintenance. Uh, I'm not pretty sure, and uh, maybe it's because I'm not a specialist. So the two problems that I found is uh, tagging phases of play can be a troublesome task and can be a subjective task. So my first idea is I want to develop a model that determines the phases of play. But I decided to change my approach. And now what I want to do is I want to create a tool that helps the specialists, that maybe for them it's really easy to identify these phases of play, to create a model following two features. Uh, first, the tool should not be time consuming. And second, the phases of play that the model identified should be based on their own definitions. Uh, so let me explain a little the idea. What I want is that the specialist sit in front of a computer. Uh, he labeled some actions like this is maintenance. Let's say that he wants to identify the maintenance phase. So he will label, hey, this is not a maintenance. This is not a maintenance. And with just a few examples, the idea is to build a model that is able to identify that this is a clear maintenance the first video, and that the second possession is clearly a non-maintenance phase. OK? That's the idea. Uh, so uh, the question that arises here is, how can we develop this tool? Um, technically, what I want to do is I want to generate a vector representation that summarizes the most important information of each action, taking into account two things. First, what I want is that similar actions should be closely located in this space. And second, I want to include the distribution of the players when the pass occurs uh, in that vector representation. Okay? And hopefully, what, what we are going to find is that actions that are closely located, most of them belong to the same phase. So to build our models, we just need some few examples, and then we can build uh, a model with a good perform performance. Uh, to depict a little the idea, what I want is I want to fit a model with 
some description of the, of the action plus uh, the position of the players when the, event, when the action occurs. And as an output, what I want is a vector representation of this action, okay? Uh, and we normally call, and we, I call this vector representation embeddings. Uh, so to create these embeddings, I'm going to, to borrow an idea from natural language processing. Uh, that idea is called word to vec And in this work, in word to vec they take advantage that the language is predictable. So if I give you this example, uh, this sentence, uh, let's say, I drink orange blank every morning. I'm pretty sure that most of you are going to agree that the missing word is used. So in word to word they, what they do, what they did, is they are trying to predict uh, the context of, of a word. Uh, and in this particular example, what they do is, I, wa I want to predict that drink orange every morning are words that normally appears in the context of use. And when they, tra when they train uh, the model with a lot of sentences, they find, they, they can generate the embeddings and they, they find results like this. So they find an embedding for juice, coffee, and water. And in the results, they found that these words are closely located between them because we normally use these words in similar contexts and have similar meanings. And on the other hand, the, the, the red cluster uh, have words like pizza, hot dog, hamburger. Again, these words have similar meanings, um, but are far away from the blue cluster because we normally use these words in different contexts. So, and this is exactly what we want for the football actions. I want that similar actions should be closely located and actions that occurs in different contexts must be far away, okay? So, Again, we are going to translate this idea to football actions. And again, football is predictable. If I give you this sequence, ball, uh, ball recovery, pass to flank, blank, headshot, and goal, I'm pretty sure that most of you are going to say that the missing action is across to the area. Uh, so I'm going to do the same idea. I, what I want to do is base, I, went, I want to predict that ball recovery, pass to flank, headshot, and goal, and actions are actions that normally appear uh, around the, this around this kind of actions, this cross to pass. Um, so, how we are going to represent our input data to feed our model? Uh, we'll already present a little the, the idea. What we are going to do is I'm going to uh, generate. I'm going to create a graph for each. Uh, for each action. The idea is that vector uh, nodes are going to represent players, edge are going to represent relationships between players, and we also are going to have some global features that describe a little how the action occur. So at node level, we are going to have some features like the position of the player, and a flag that indicates if the, if the player is a ball carrier. In the edge features, we have the distance between the players, and a flag that indicates if the two players that the edge connects uh, are teammates. And finally, in global features, we have things like the, the end location of the pass, the body part uh, that was used to execute the pass, and the height of the pass. Okay? And then here we have a beautiful challenge. Uh, as you know, the Stats 360 data um, we, is obtained from the broadcast, so we don't have in every action or in every frame, we don't have the same number of players. We can have different number of players and different number of edges. So uh, the challenge here is how we are going to represent this, uh, this unstructured data. And for this purpose, graph neural network is a really good fit. We can, it, it is able to handle different number of players, different number of, of edge. So for, for that reason, we use graph neural network. And now we need to define how we are going to represent the output of our model. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to translate every action into a word. Uh, I follow one idea that McDassie presents in his work embedding the language of, of football using NLP. And the structure is that what I want to do is, for each action, I will have three things. First, I'm going to put the name of the event. 
uh, that could be pass, carry, and dribble, etc. Then I'm going to add the location of the pass uh, based on this splitting field. And finally, I'm going to add some other attributes. That depends on the event. For example, if it is a pass, I can have a, some, some attributes like the direction of the pass, the length of the pass, and the body part that was used to execute the pass. Let me give you an example how we are going to translate actions into, into a word. So here we have a pass in the right side of the field. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put pass, uh, because this, is a, this action is a pass. Then I'm going to put the location of the pass that in this case the, the, the pass starts at the square 1.1. 1 .1. And finally, I'm going to add some attributes. In this case, the, the pass was a ground pass with a medium length uh, executed with the foot and in the east direction. And we follow this structure with all the actions. And we finally have all what that we need to train our model. Uh, my vocabulary, I mean, the different number of actions that I found created following this structure was around 6,000 different actions. And now we start to train our model with all the stats 360 data. To feed our model, a, try to predict based on this input what, what is the context of the event. And we finally obtain our embeddings. Uh, it's important to mention that here I just focus on passes. Okay, so these embeddings belong to uh, just passes. Uh, but now, we have our embeddings, how we are going to evaluate of embeddings. So the, the, the evaluation that I did is consists of two parts. The first, the first stage, I'm going to ask to the embeddings, hey, tell me, I'm going to randomly select one action. Please tell me what is the most similar action based on the embeddings. And when I ask to the embeddings, the, the most similar action of this action that, that is uh, passed to the keeper that can be considered as a maintenance, the embeddings give me this result. Please note that both are passes to the keeper. Please note that, is in, that here I have, in the first image, I have only like 10 players. And in the second image, I have around 20 players. And even uh, the number of players is different. The embeddings are able to capture uh, that the dynamics of the play are quite similar. Then I asked for this action that can be considered for me as a buildup that is a pass between the first line of the defender, and the embeddings show me that this is the most similar play. Then there is an example of a sustained threat. Well, for me, it's a pass in the last part of the field, and the embeddings tell me that this is the most similar action. And this is an example of a counterattack. Uh, it looks like the blue team recovers the ball and is going to start an attack. And the most similar actions based on the embeddings is this one. So, the embeddings, it looks like the embeddings are putting closely together actions that are similar. Okay, now I want to try another stage of the evaluation. I want to try to see if my embeddings are capturing, are capturing uh, some analogies. But let me explain you first what is the meaning of analogy. Uh, this idea is again from work to back. So let me explain you how, work, how analogies work in work to back. In word to back, what they, what they do is they ask to the embeddings, hey, what is the one word that is similar to king in the same sense as woman is similar to man? And they translate this question into a, into a vector operation. Then that is this. And they found that the most similar actions to, this, to the result of these operations is the vector that represents the word queen. It's impressive, right? So I want to ask to my model questions like this, okay, to see if it's able to capture some analogies. So I, I want to ask to my mo to the embeddings, hey, what is the one similar actions, the, most, the one similar action that is similar to action one, in the same sense as action two is similar to action three. So please note that action two and action three is the same player configuration on the field, okay? The only difference is that the, in action two, uh, the pass go uh, to the middle of the field, and in action three, the pass go to, uh, to the flank. Uh, and action one is quite similar to action three. The only difference is that the action occurs in the right side of the field. So the action that we expect uh, here uh, as, uh, as the 
the action that satisfies this analogy must be a pass. We must be must have the similar configure the exactly the same configuration as action what one, but the pass should go to the middle of the pitch. We or embeddings tell me that this is the most similar action that satisfy the analogy. It's not exactly what I expect. Uh, however, it's a pass that ends in the middle of the field. Uh, but, but when I ask to the embedding, hey, okay, tell me the, the second most likely action based on this question, he showed me this result. Okay, that was what, is what I expected. So uh, with this, I evaluate and I verify that my embeddings are capturing some dynamics of the game. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I want to develop the tool that I told you. I developed this UI just to, to tag some actions. Like I want, in this example, what I want to do, I want to identify the maintenance phase, okay? So uh, with this tool, I start to label some actions. Around 30 minutes, I labeled 500 labels, 500 uh, actions just as a maintainer. This is a maintainer, this is not a maintainer, this is a maintainer, this is not a maintainer, based on my definition. And this is some, uh, some of the results. Uh, here, uh, the model that I built based on the labels and um, on the embeddings uh, tell me that this, this sequence of actions should be considered as a maintenance phase. Look that all the passes are, looks like a secure passes. They never risk, risk the ball and they are just trying to maintain the ball in his own field. And here in the top you can see, in the top right you can see the probability of the model for the ball, for the passes actions. And I asked to, to my model, okay, now I want to see an example where there is a sequence of passes uh, in his own field, but that you tell me, hey, this cannot, con be, cannot consider as a maintenance. And he showed me example like this. Please note that uh, for me, at least, all the passes look like uh, the blue team that is attacking is just trying to, to go away from the pressure. It looks like at really risk passes. For example, here we have a pass like to the keeper, but it's a risky pass. And for this reason, my, the model says it is not a maintenance. And finally, the blue team loses the ball. So here I show you an introductory work that aims to generate embeddings from football actions, incorporating all the context that Statsbond 360 data now give us. Uh, but there is still room for improvement. So the first thing uh, what I will do is we first need a rigorous test. Here I just show you an evaluation that I did manually. I think that we can create a more rigorous test to evaluate our embeddings. Second, uh, we can try different alternative graph representations, and we can add some features at no level and its features uh, like the velocity of the players or the orientation of the players. And finally, we can, I think that we can use these embeddings to create player representations, and we can find similar player based on the reactions. And thank you. Mm -hmm.